Family farming is probably one of the most important topics that uh, is in the development agenda today. Why? We, uh, during the International Year of Family Farming 2014, it became very, very clear how it is central and fundamental for any kind of development action to take into account the problems of family farmers, uh, their issues, and how they can be solved in order to, of course, leave no one behind, which is one of the main goals of the Agenda 2030. If we want to leave no one behind, we certainly need to pay attention to family farmers. Family farming is the biggest employer in the world. So if we want to reduce poverty, to eliminate poverty, obviously we cannot do it without paying attention to what happens in the rural areas and specifically what happens in the family farms. This is why the UN General Assembly proclaimed in December 2018 the Decade of Family Farming building on the success of the International Year of Family Farming, where it became very clear that better policies are needed to favor, to address all the different issues, all the challenges that family farmers currently face. So, giving ourselves a whole decade to be able to put in place very concrete actions and very concrete solutions to all of these different challenges faced by family farmers. We know that every region has specific issues for family farming and therefore we want to start out from a global plan of action which has been discussed for months, agreed uh, in different forms at the global level but it's only going to be meaningful when we translate this at the national level. So at the national level is where the action is going to happen. We have this beautiful, I believe, wonderful global action plan and we want to translate it into national action plans that will address the specific, concrete needs of family farmers in every single country. The Global Action Plan has a number of different pillars. One of them, the enabling environment. It's very important that if we're going to have the right policies, we also have the right legal frameworks. We know what is there that is necessary to be put in place in terms of the policies that are going to work for family farmers. So enabling environment is kind of the transversal topic that is going to be there present all the time. Something we have to pay attention to always. Then we have two transversal areas of work which are going to go through every single aspect of the hopefully national but the global uh, plan of action items which are youth and women. So obviously youth is fundamental, youth is the future of the world, it's the present and it's going to be the future of the world. Uh, we're very worried with the situation we're seeing more and more in the different areas of the world by which youth are leaving agriculture and leaving to go to the cities, leaving to go to urban areas. Um, if this continues we will not have agriculture in the future. So concerns, specific concerns of youth are fundamental to be addressed throughout the whole program of action um, of this decade of family farming. And on the other hand, equally important are the concerns of women. Rural women are the backbone of family farming and they're the backbone of agriculture. Rural women are more or less 43% of the agricultural labor force uh, globally, but in some regions of the world, in Africa, the percentage is higher. If their specific concerns are not taken into account in specific policy issues, in specific addresses, in specific approaches, we simply will not be able to address the issues around family farming in general. So these are two transversal uh, topics that are going to be important throughout the plan of action and throughout the decade. After that, we have a number of more specific pillars that will be transformed and contextualized according to the needs of the regions. But out of these, very importantly, is, global, uh, the, is the collective action. Why? Because without having very strong organizations, it's very difficult that the world is going to be able to address the problems faced by family farmers. Let me give you an example. Uh, family farming uh, today is usually small. Family farming is not only small farming, it's not only smallholder farming, 
We have very large farms that are run by families and also very small farms run by families. The decade is for all of these farms, both small and large, but the ones that face usually very, very acute problems are the small ones. So small farms are what we see mostly in agriculture in the world. We know that 72% of all farms in the world have less than one hectare. 84% of all farms in the world have less than two hectares. Therefore, when we talk about agriculture in the world in general, we're talking about mostly small holdings. And they have very specific and concrete problems that need to be addressed. And many of these issues faced by smallholders can be addressed through collective action, through cooperatives. Whereas it's very difficult for banks to give credit to a farm, a family farm that has less than one hectare. If family farms get together, it will be much easier for them to access financing, which was one of the major bottlenecks that are faced by family farmers throughout the world. If they, they come together, they will also have access to better inputs. They will be able to negotiate better prices for their inputs. They will be better able to access the different markets. Uh, they will be able better to have access to other services like information, like technology, uh, like mechanization. So when family farmers come together in collective action through cooperatives or other forms, they are much better able to reach the solutions that are needed for every one of the challenges that they face. The decade of family farming um, is going to be run by a secretariat which is jointly run by uh, the FAO and IFAT. So the UN resolution, resolution requested both FAO and IFAT to run the secretariat of the, of the decade. We have uh, put together an international steering committee that has representations from each region of the world uh, and that has representation from farmers organization from different parts of the world and the different stakeholders uh, that are central to be able to be make this decade a success. Uh, we have already been meeting this International Steering Committee is, um, is chaired by Costa Rica who was uh, one of the main countries behind uh, making uh, the decade uh, a reality and they're chairing this International Steering Committee. So through the International Steering Committee, uh, the global plan of action was discussed um, at length, was agreed on by consensus. And this International Steering Committee is going to be overseeing the whole of the implementation of the actions, uh, both at global level, also regional level, and afterwards uh, will be overseeing and will be promoting work at national level, through national committees, uh, and other means. So after the, um, the formal launch of the Decade of Family Farming that took place in Rome on 27 to 29 May 2019, so we're formally launched uh, with the decade, uh, and where the global plan of action was endorsed. Now the next steps are going to be the regional launches and the number of them are already being lined up. And after that, we will continue to support the country level and with the national action plans and the national participation on topics according to their own context, to their own needs, to their own interests. So we're going to be launching also action networks uh, to which the different countries different regions and uh, different organizations, uh, local, regional, global, will be able to, to participate and also to, to propose new ones if they so wish. I think the SDG agenda provides a much more solid possibility for development for the world than previous development agendas. And in particular, the development agenda that we had before, the Millennium Development Goals that we all remember, um, were very important at the moment in which they were launched, but had many big problems. And one of them is that this whole development agenda launched in the year 2000 didn't address rural areas, and didn't address rural people and rural women, and didn't address farming, and didn't address family farming, or land, or soils, or forests, and so on. 
with the SDGs, with the Sustainable Development Goals, we see the centrality of family farming that was recognized and it's firmly embedded within this development agenda. It's not only under SDG 2 about eradication of hunger, it is throughout. So family, farmers, family farming has an impact throughout the SDG agenda and is fundamental to reaching many of the other development goals. Without addressing family farming as it should be addressed, it is very unlikely that we will be able to reach everybody and this agenda is about leaving no one behind. It is highly unlikely that we will have uh, sustainability in production, in consumption. It's highly unlikely that we are going to have healthy people, who are people who are nourished adequately, who will be able to have access to food that is produced in a sustainable way and that is going to be also um, up to the, the nutrition needs of people. So family farming really pervades the development agenda and this is why it is also at the core of FAO's agenda. Family farming is fundamental to what happens in the rural areas and the rural areas are very heterogeneous. Every single rural area has uh, its specificities and uh, has its people and the different people have different needs, different ways of seeing the world, different ways of coming up with their own solutions which are usually the best solutions if they're able to implement them. And um, the idea is that we are able through an approach that looks at rural areas in their integrity and through the lens of family farming to be able to address this, this heterogeneity, to see all these different uh, views of the world, these different ways of production, of ways of relating to nature and relating to the environment like those uh, with indigenous people, with pastoralists, with other kinds of ways of organizing life and viewing um, the universe uh, within, the, within the rural areas. So what do we want by the end of the decade of family farming? What we want is to have a coherent set of policies that of course have to be to bring together the different sectors. They have to be intersectoral. They have to be multi-actor and intersectoral and multi-stakeholder. So policies that will be able to integrate the different needs of family farming that go across different areas and different sectors of government. Uh, these needs of family farmers have to do with land tenure, but also with health, also with education, also uh, with uh, access to information, to technology, to ICTs. Uh, and so we need to be able to integrate across the different areas of, of government, um, policies that will be able to provide coherent and long-lasting solutions. In order to be effective, these policies need to be done in a participatory way. They need to be done with the participation with family farmers and their organizations, youth organizations, women's organizations. They have to be there in the policy process and also in the formulation and also obviously in the implementation. We have 10 years ahead of us. It may seem long, but it's really not very long because our objectives are very ambitious. And in only 10 years, we really expect that we're going to transform rural areas to make them the place where family farming can thrive, when people, where people, especially youth, uh, can make true their dreams and have a lifestyle and a livelihood uh, according to their expectations. Ten years seems long, but indeed it's not very long, so we need to start work right now. Communication for development is absolutely essential if we want to be effective in terms of making sure that the needs of family farmers are understood and are able and are translated into appropriate policy interventions. So communication for development is essential to hear the voices, to listen to the actual voices, the actual needs, uh, the actual realities of people for whom the different policies are going to be made and who are going to, to benefit. 
So this is one of the core elements that we are going to be emphasizing and development, developing throughout uh, the decade of family farming.